Now, last time we were working, we were here on this page where we had this very uninspired loop for um, all of the different posts that I have in my database. Um, hopefully you've created all the posts you're gonna need because right now we're gonna be focused on building out that custom loop that we reviewed in the previous step. Now, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna analyze the different elements that we need to make this look fantastic. So let's quickly take a look at our completed site to kind of break it down and see what we're gonna need for this and then go build it out. Okay, so now here on our completed classified site, we've got the loop layout we'll be building here. So we've got a few elements going on. We have our image, our featured image, and then we have another image that shows up on hover and we actually utilize the gallery to do that. And then we've got the status which is Monty is still lost. We've got the title, we've got the item type, we've got the content, the location, and that's it that kind of goes on the actual loop. So to build that out is actually not that tough. It's just a matter of finding a way around the Divi machine modules and implementing them. So let's take a look at how we would do that. Alrighty, so now as usual, we're gonna be starting in the back end of our Divi site here, and we are going to create a new layout in the library. So we're gonna to go to Divi, Divi library, and then we're gonna click on add new. Now we can give this layout a name. It's always good to select something that you'll recognize later. And I would just call this classified loop. And then for the layout type, I like to utilize the layout as the type, just because you get a little bit more flexibility, you get a little bit more control, because now you can manipulate the section, the rows, and the modules inside. So that is just better, but you can select whatever you want there. It, you would just be limiting your own options. Um, as far as a category, you can go ahead and do that. Um, maybe if you have multiple loops on your site, you want to add a category called loops. So I'll just do that. So let's submit and open up our page here. Okay, so first things first, we're just gonna be building from scratch as we're gonna be starting from square one. And here we go. Now the loop that we built here on the classified site has a single column layout all the way through. So I think we can just put one row here. And I think what we'll do is we'll break this down. We'll have the top section, which is gonna be the image here. And then we're gonna have the bottom section that has all the info, right? So I think for me, that logically makes the most sense. So I'm just gonna add a row for each of those. So let's hop back here and I'm gonna create that single column row. And what I like to do is go into the mobile mode because this kind of closely represents what this is gonna look like on the page, right? So if you had like a listing, um, like the Amazon example we gave you before with the images off to the side and all the infos on the right, you would have a different view. You would just use a desktop or something like that just to give you the best possible preview. Okay, so now back here, we're gonna go ahead and add the different modules. We'll break this process down into two steps. We'll add all the modules that we're gonna be using and then we're gonna go style it all up. So for the first one, we're gonna be adding a thumbnail module. And then again, you know, you can search it like this, but you can also come down here, you can go to machine, and then you can go look for thumbnail, there she is, and you can pull it up. Now, the thumbnail I want to use is the large version, um, just find it a little bit better. And then the image style that we're gonna be using here is gonna be flip. The flip is what creates this effect when you hover and shows a different image. So coming back here, it's gonna wanna know the first image it'll use, of course, is gonna be your featured image. And then the second image is gonna be that gallery second image. So you can say, select the ACF field and then we will just go ahead and select the gallery image too. There we go. And save that. Now this is of course not gonna do anything yet. Um, we're also gonna be needing an ACF item field. Here we have the lost and we'll do some magic when we get to the design portion to move it up here. But for now, we're just gonna drop it in. So this is gonna be your first introduction to the ACF item module. So. Let's go ahead and add one of those. You can just type in ACF, that'll bring it up. 
And what the ACF item module does, it will bring up any of your ACF fields and it will bring it right into your layout. So that's a pretty cool and powerful tool to utilize. Um, so let's go ahead and first you need to tell it, okay, well, what's the ACF name? So you just select the field associated with the post type that you are gonna be utilizing. And the first one is gonna be the status. And then we will go ahead and utilize the current post type, of course, there. So that's fine. And then you can set stuff like the type of um, tag you wanna give it. You can make it H1, whatever you wanna do. There's a lot of options here, but we're just gonna leave it on a regular P tag. Now, when we go over to the label, we're going to tell it, well, we do not want you to show the label. And we also want to go ahead and tell it to make the background color. It's going to be white. And as you can see, of course, when we look at our finished product here, that's kind of what we got going on. And I think that's going to be good for now. So like when we're working on this initially, you know, we could save that one. It might be better to work like this when you're building the structure out as you don't really see anything on the visual side. When we get into the design portion, we'll certainly get into it a little bit more. Um, and then, you know, of course, you would have noticed here that we've got the wish list icon on there. That works great. Um, but that is going to be covered in the later portion when we're talking about adding a My Account area. So we won't be covering that right now but we will take a look later. And um, that's obviously one of the optional modules in the course. So don't worry if you don't have the view machine accounts, you can still follow along with the bulk of the course. Okay, and so not that if we wanted to, we can quickly go and make a page and drop one of these archive loop modules on it so that we can kind of see our progression as we go. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna update this right now. And then what we'll do is we'll just create a blank page Essentially, um, we'll just go to pages and add new. We're gonna say, yep, we wanna use the Divi Builder. And we shall build from scratch. Now we'll just create a, a regular single column row and I'm just gonna type in archive for the archive loop module. And what the archive loop module does is it'll loop through any loop layout that you've created and select it in the um, Divi library. So it's very convenient and easy to use. So let's take a look at how we do that. So right here, I need to create a custom loop. So it's very informative. So it's gonna tell you what you need to do. We're gonna go and select the post type as classifieds. And then we still need to tell it, well, what custom loop layout would we like to use? And we'll just click and select the classifieds loop. And there you go, that easily, we have created something that looks absolutely awful, but you can see that it's already functional. It's got that flip effect that we talked about earlier, and um, it's got the status down there. So we have actually done quite a bit so far. So let's go ahead and quickly just give this page a name, and then we'll just say uh, loop test. Page, it really doesn't matter what you call this. We're just gonna utilize this to preview our loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and oh, save that and then publish that. And then I can exit the visual builder. And here we are on our page with all of our posts right there. So fantastic. Now, of course, there are some things within the archive loop module. Um, we're not gonna get too deep into this because we are gonna cover this in detail later. But if I enable the visual builder again, real quick here and go into the settings, I can scroll down here and here are some loop options that you have for you. Now, by default, it'll only show you 10 um, posts, but you can put this down to 20, whatever you wanna do. And you'll see that it actually populates with some of the other posts that I have in here. And here's one of the posts I made earlier when we were adding some data, but that's not where it ends. You can control what the loop looks like by just coming down here and taking the grid options. And you can say, well, I'd prefer a masonry layout and I would like three columns instead of four columns. And you can go ahead and do a lot of different awesome changes here. But you know we're gonna keep it at this for now so that we can just come back here and preview our work as we go on. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, done. And then exit the visual boulder. Oh, it says I have unsaved changes. Maybe I did not hit that save button. There we go, exit, cool. So here we are. 
Now let's head back to the dashboard. I'll just open that on a different tab so that I can come back and just refresh this page as I go. I will go back to Divi and we'll go back to library and edit our classifieds loop layout. Okay, cool. So here we are. We're going to add in the rest of the structure here. Uh, I should actually just stay in this view. Now, remember I said that we're splitting it in the top portion, which is going to be the image, and then the bottom portion, which is going to have all the content. So let's add another row here. And then one of the first modules that we'll be adding in this part of the layout, of course, is going to be the title. So if I just type in title, I can use the post title, the machine module, and I can go ahead and make some changes here if need be, but there's nothing to add yet, but we will get to the design portion soon enough. So to add that item type, we're gonna come back here and add another module. And the item type, because it's part of the taxonomy, it's part of the meta. So if I type in meta, you can pull in the post meta, and now you've got the option to add some items. If I click on that, we can go and choose the different meta. So custom taxonomy is of course what we created there. We're gonna select the post type as classifieds. And then what we need to do is go ahead and choose the taxonomy type, which is over here. And I will just scroll down and we have item types over here. And you can see how it uses that slug for the taxonomy. So that's what you're gonna to wanna to be using there. So go ahead and select that. And then what we wanna do is also make sure that we're linking the items and we're not gonna be using a label here as we're gonna be styling this up. So if I save that, you can see that we've got it added up there and that should be it. So save that. And then when we preview here, all these modules are not visible or compatible just yet, unfortunately. So this is why we created that extra page. I'm gonna hop back here and we are gonna be adding all the extra modules and then we'll continue and preview what we've done. So let's add another module here and this is gonna be the content module at this time. So post content, and then we can select the content and it's gonna be you know, either the excerpt, but we did not include an excerpt. So it's just plain content. And then we just wanna include about six words in that little snippet because that'll keep our layout nice and tight if you look over here. That's kind of like what we did over here. So I think that will work best. And then and that is really gonna be it. Now you can choose any amount of words. It depends on what your layout will accommodate. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that one. And then when we come back here to the front end and scroll down, we can see that we also need to add a price module over here. Now that's gonna contain some conditional, well, it's not conditional logic that we would need to define necessarily but I'm gonna show you a cool feature of the ACF item module. So when we come back here, let's add the module. It's gonna be an ACF item module because again, this is one of those um, advanced custom fields that we added, right? So we're gonna select the ACF field. It's gonna be price. And pretty much this stuff you can kind of leave as is. We'll go to label and then do we wanna show a label? Nope, we're not gonna be showing a label. And then in the other options down here, there's a lot of different things in here that you can look at. And um, right now here by other field settings, we're gonna prettify the text because it's a number. So it'll typically be obviously an amount. We're gonna say prettify the text because now it'll add this comma separator. You know, when it's three zeros, comma. And maybe if you're in a country like Colombia, they use a dot in between instead. So that will be helpful for you in that case. Next up, we will scroll down a bit and we will get to the image and icon and we are definitely gonna be using icon. And if we scroll down here somewhere, there should be one that represents money. There we go. That is good enough for me. And we do want that on the left side. So that's gonna work perfectly for me. So good stuff. So I think that's all we need for the money. Oh, and before I move on, of course, I promised you great things and a great feature on this ACF item module. Now, we don't want this to display when, let's say, we're looking for, you know, Monty that's lost, right? Because, you know, you're not going to have a dollar amount or something associated with something that's lost. The ACF item module has a great feature built into it. So when we go over here to the visibility portion, 
you can say what to do when there is an empty value. Now, remember, we didn't put default values when we set these fields up, and this is why. You can tell it, well, you can hide the parent row. There's a lot of different options here of hiding certain things. So these could be things like settings that you've set. It's just a lot of different stuff you can do. For us, we just want to hide the entire module. So this is going to work perfectly for us. So let me go ahead and save that. And let's continue looking at what we're building. Now, I just also want to mention, like as we're going through and building out the structure for this, you can really look at any site's loop layout. Like we looked at Amazon before and go ahead and build out, I mean, really whatever you want, because all we're using is basically Divi and then our fancy modules from Divi Machine. The next thing we need is that divider line because there are no extra fields that we want to show or not show when we are um, working with our loop. So, um, and the different post types at this point in time. So let's go back to the layout. We'll just add a divider, it's right there. And we will just make sure that the divider is shown. So I'm gonna select that and save that. And now we get to one of the fun fields, I think. Yeah, we're gonna go to the location. Can you guys guess what type of field we're gonna use? Yep, ACF item, because we added that custom field. So let me go ahead and type that, add it in. And then the type here, we're gonna select the location, we will go to the label because we don't need no label. We just want it to show where the item is. So that's going to work perfectly fine. And then we're going to go down to the image and icon spot. And we're going to be using icon. And then, you know, since it's a location, I, I mean, we can use a building. We can use a pin. Maybe a pin is better, right? So I'm going to use that pin. We're going to put it on the left. That's working perfect for me. And I am going to go ahead and add that in. Now, the last thing of the structure you'll be happy to know that we'll be doing is, is that we're going to be adding the button. So if we type in BTN, we have the view post button because, of course, when the user gets there, you want them to be able to hit that button and view the single classifieds page. So we will add that in. And there's really nothing we need to add in yet. Now, you can add some custom uh, text in here, you could just put view if you want to keep it simple, um, really anything. I'll just keep it at the default, which is view post, and leave it at that. Now, you can also specify with, whether you want the button to be full width. That's going to be entirely up to you, whether you want to open it up in a new tab. If you want it to open up in a modal, that's a whole different topic, but definitely check out the documentation if you're curious about that more. And that's going to be it for this. So now that we've got the basic structure set up, let's go take a look at what this looks like on our preview page. So let's update this and go back to our loop test page and let's refresh. Okay, and there you go. A lot of more info on the screen now. This is really starting to get kind of close to what we've got going on here. Of course, we've got some fun styling and effects that happen when you hover over things but I think we've done a pretty good job so far in replicating that layout. So that's gonna be it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna tackle styling this. I know this is a lot of information at one time, so we wanna break it up for you, but if you are full of energy and you wanna keep going, I'm gonna catch you in the next lesson right now. Otherwise, I'll catch you later.